Hey guys, it's Nick from Mining Office, and today I'm gonna to be giving you 10 tips for the beginner miners out there, or the miners who are just starting. Now, you might wonder why all my rigs are off here. It's because there's a crazy windstorm actually going on. My power is going on and off constantly. I'm not gonna risk it. Anyhow, let's get straight into the video here. I'm gonna give you guys 10 tips for all the people who are fairly new to mining, or who have not gotten into mining yet, but are thinking about it. So, let's get into it. I'll start by saying that these are all general tips. I'm not gonna give anything specific like buy 3070s instead of buying 3080s, for example. It'll be general tips and rules to follow. And I'd appreciate if you guys can leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the type of content I make. So the tips are in no specific order, so let's get to the first one. My first tip would be to start slowly. Guys, I get a lot of comments on my videos or just people asking me, um, you know, I have X amount of money to draw up. What should I buy? What should I get? And often the amount of money they're talking about is a really large amount of money, like 10 grand or even up sometimes. So I think that's extremely large for an initial investment. I think you want to start slowly. Start if you have your computer, add a card to it or get a good graphics card that can mine. Start slow and build up on that. It'll be much easier to manage and you'll learn a lot more like that and manage your risk as well. So I know it seems very tempting when you see big profits to just want to toss all your money at it right away and you know hit that ROI as soon as possible and then have a bunch of stuff paid off. But guys, that's really not the best way in terms of risk assessment, all right? If we move on to tip number two, it's gonna to be to do your research, all right? Spend a lot of time doing research. Before I bought anything or even started mining, I did countless hours of research on YouTube and just Google in general, trying to find out what was the best solution for things, why you would do certain things, but guys, you have to put in the time. There's no shortcuts. Um, Myself and other content creators, we make videos to help you guys understand these things quicker and get the gist of it across. But you know what? That's not gonna replace any hard done research that you're gonna do yourself. And yeah, so I recommend you guys put in the time and do the research, all right? Tip number three, guys, is gonna be safety first, all right? I know it sounds lame, but trust me, you don't want your stuff catching fire, you don't want any incidents going on, you don't want your house burning down because you made a bad decision and bought a cheap part that's gonna cost you not only your mining rig, but worse, you know, and hopefully nobody gets hurt. But you see what I'm saying here, all right? So this rig here has splitters, as you can see. You wanna make sure you're running quality splitters, you're not overloading them. I would say this is the number one culprit, all right, when people have fires with their rigs, is they're using cheap splitters. And actually on a few of these cards, I am using cheap splitters, shame on me, but I have replacements over there that I will swap them out for. And another big point, guys, is power bars. Make sure your power bars, if you are using any, on especially 120 volt. If you're on 240, you should be using PDUs. On 120, make sure your power bars are rated for at least 15 amps, and minimum can run the whole circuit. So 1,500 watts, let's say, if you're doing the 80% rule, more or less. It's better safe than sorry. So we'll move on to tip number four here. Tip number four is going to be don't cheap out on power, guys. At the beginning, I think you'll be tempted to just get whatever's cheapest to get your cards up and running, right? You'll say, these are the money makers, this is what matters, all the rest is just accessory to get this working, which is right in a certain sense, but I don't think it's the right approach to be taking, if I'm honest. Now, if you're just running a few cards, it won't make that much of a difference if you're running a bronze power supply or a platinum or a gold or whatnot. But once you get to a point where, look, you have nine cards here, seven cards there, multiple computers going, and I'm limited on the amount of watts I can run here in the office, it becomes very important what quality PSU you're running, especially for running a lot of stuff, guys. Over the long run, the electric bill will add up. Number five is easy to say, guys, but this is how I started is don't be afraid to buy local stuff used of course be careful when you do that but my point I want to get here is look for deals don't just go find the GPU on sale for Amazon that's hundred fifty percent the price it's gonna take you forever to ROI and basically you're getting scalped right from Amazon or from whatever place you're buying it from uh, you might get older cards you might get used cards uh, you might want to pay the scalp price for full hash rate cards I don't recommend that but look for deals and try and save money where you can it's not a question of just aping into it and tossing money at it. That is not the right approach, all right? So be meticulous, think about your buys, and plan them out ahead of time. Of course, if a deal comes up, take advantage of it, but don't just be impulsive and throw money at stuff and expect it to work out, all right? 
My next point is to reuse what you already have. For an example, in this computer, I built it during the summer, not with the purpose of specifically mining with the CPU, but this is a 5800X, so I put it towards Raptorium mining, right? Reuse what you already have. Uh, at the beginning, I bought used Veta frames on the market, and I just used what I had, what was available. The spare power supplies I had, even though they were bronze, and look, that goes against other tips I gave you guys. I said if you have lower quality, don't go for the bronze power supplies, right? Don't go for that, but if that's what you have, and you have to spend zero dollars, right, additional, then go with that, that's okay. But when it craps out, don't buy that same product again, right? That's all I'm trying to say. So I hope you guys hear me out on that. Next point kind of fits in with that, and it's efficiency. Not just with the power supplies, going back to it if you want, gold, silver, whatever, but with your cards, with your buys, in every aspect of GPU mining, if you wanna be successful, you have to be efficient. So you wanna overclock your cards in a way where they're consuming the least amount of power for the most amount of hash rate. And what's that gonna take? That's gonna take you guys putting in time and not just copying other people's overclocks, but actually, depending on which card you have, if you have a 3070 or a 3070 Ti or a 3080, yeah, maybe watch some YouTube videos and get an overall idea of how to overclock it, but you're gonna to have to put in the time to check your card with your memory, how to optimize it, what the core clock to put, what power limit, right? All these things. So. That's just one example, but another thing too is optimize your rigs, right? So if you have a 12 GPU motherboard, don't stick it in a frame that can only fit six, right? Put it in something like this. So when I get a 12 GPU motherboard, well, I'm gonna take this nine GPU motherboard out of here and get that one in here. So it's just small things, guys, but it's small things here and there that'll make you a winner in the long run. Point eight will be the quickest one of all. Invest in a hardware wallet, enough said. Just do it, it's 75 bucks, it's not expensive, and if you're buying all this equipment for mining, you can spend 75 bucks to protect all your mining rewards, all right? So there's no excuse, buy a Trezor, buy a Ledger, buy whatever it is, but protect your mining rewards. Another tip I'll give you is do not panic sell. Guys, I do it too. I look at my returns every day, I look what I'm at on Ethermine, I look what my total stack is, I get that, but when you see the market go down, don't panic, don't sell off, right? Sell off what you have to. If you have to pay for your electricity, sell off your electricity. If you have to sell off to pay for your GPUs, sell off to pay for your GPUs. But don't panic sell because the price of ETH or the price of Ravencoin or the price of Firo or the price of Flux drops 10 or 15% in a day because at the end, you're a loser. Once that comes, that price comes back up, you're, you just lost, all right? So crypto is volatile. The more assets you have working towards it, the more exposed you are. But guys, don't panic, don't panic. Have diamond hands, hold on to your assets and you'll be a winner in the long run, all right? And the last point we'll end on this is only invest what you are willing to lose. And that fits in with the first point, which is to start slowly, right? If you start slowly, you're only investing what you're willing to lose. If you just go all in, you might lose more than you're willing to. So unless you're a millionaire and you're investing a small amount of your fortune to get into this, go in slow, invest only what you're willing to lose and everything will be good like that. So like I said, guys, there is no specific tips in anything I said. It's all very general tips, principles to live by. But I think if you do that, you'll have a very successful time in crypto mining. So I hope these tips helped you out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Peace out.